there's been a lot of buzz around Notion's latest feature called Buttons. Uh, but you may still have some questions on things like how they work, how you can use them, and most importantly, how you can customize them to fit your specific workflow. So that's what uh, we're gonna dive into in this video. If you're new to the channel, my name's Dave. I'm a certified Notion consultant. I help remote teams reach peak performance with Notion, among other tools. If you're curious, you can head to the notioncoach.com to learn more about Notion consulting and generally how it works. But let's jump into buttons. There's a lot of use cases for buttons, but there's one in particular that I want to focus on today. For projects that have similar sets of tasks, I'm thinking content creation like writing an email newsletter every week or every other week, uh, marketing campaigns, just to name a few examples. Up until this point, it's been a little clunky to set up project templates and also identify tasks for that project. So you had to create a project template, create a list of um, bullet points or pages, and then manually drag those pages into a task database to then have them assigned to the project. So definitely took a few extra manual steps, and especially for teams and clients who may not be super familiar or comfortable in Notion yet, this manual step could cause problems. We could you know, do it incorrectly, miss some tasks, and overall just a not ideal experience. So let's see how that works. One thing to note before we start is in this example, we have two key databases, projects and tasks that are technically relational databases. So if you're curious on what that means, if we've got, uh, I'm using a version of the Manifest OS template, but if we jump into projects and open up a project here, um, this uh, up to the right arrow means that these this is related to a task database and this allows us to set up um, smarter filters and um, sorting by projects. For example, you can see all your tasks within each project in a uh, board style view, for example. So that is something that we would need to have set up to kind of go through each of these steps. So if you haven't related a task database with the projects database, um, you might want to do that before jumping ahead. So what we're gonna do first is jump to the projects database and the very first thing I wanna do is head to the uh, new button dropdown, which gives us access to all of the templates if you've created any um, for this database. So these are all project types. And um, what we're gonna focus on today is creating a project template for writing an email newsletter. Um, we have one here, but we're gonna make it from scratch just to kind of see all of these steps uh, not only in creating the button, but um, creating the project template. So we're going to select new template and I'll call this uh, new email newsletter. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and add an icon. Give it a mail. Um, if you kind of color code by team, department, or project type, uh, that could be helpful just to quickly scan a list of projects. So. For in this case, all of the writing related projects are in blue and we're gonna open this full screen. We've got a bunch of extra properties that we're not gonna get into, uh, but let's focus on some properties in particular. Area, if you've used or are familiar with the para method, which is projects, areas, resources, and archives. Areas are essentially buckets to be able to organize projects, documents, things like that. So in this case, we will um, add this to writing. Schedule and files of media, we're gonna leave these blank because these are properties that we're going to fill in when we actually apply the template. So we've got um, a, an email newsletter project template here. The next thing I wanna do is dry, uh, copy and paste the link to my task database, make some adjustments to that, uh, and then we'll be ready to set up our first button. So in uh, databases, I'm just going to grab the actions link and we'll give this a header. And we're gonna paste that link here, create a link view. And what we're gonna do is just create a new empty view just to make these changes um, from scratch. We're gonna use a table view. And the next thing I wanna do is, let's make this a little bit bigger. Next thing I wanna do is, um, make some adjustments like we could hide the database title because we have projects ta tasks up here. Let's get rid of the vertical lines uh, just to clean that up and click done. And this is showing every task 
whether or not it's related to this project template, which we don't want. So what I want to do, um, and one of the benefits of relating a project and task databases together is that we could filter by project. And if we um, go to the project relation, I could filter by, in this case, new email newsletter, which is essentially filtering by this page. So whenever we apply this template, it's going to automatically update the filter to whatever we, uh, whatever newsletter we're creating. So I'll set up that filter. So that means that essentially we have no tasks related to this template, which is good, which is what we want. Next thing I want to do is head to properties and make some decisions on what properties we want to see uh, in this particular view. Now, with Notion databases, they could get very overwhelming very quickly. So we want to be intentional about what properties does it make sense to see in the project page. And for other information that could be useful, you could always open up that task page and kind of go through those um, more kind of micro properties related to tasks. Like if there's a note, if there's uh, you know comments, if there's people that are need to be informed of a task, things like that that we probably don't want to see here. So first thing we want to do is identify what properties we want to see. So definitely the name, and then I want to see the due date and um, if we go to who it's assigned to, and then probably if we've got like a priority level, let's add that. Also maybe time estimate if you're tracking time and priority. So maybe these four um, and we're good to go there. Next thing I want to do here is group this table by status. So if we uh, click on the menu and go to group, you can group by any virtually any property related to the task database. Uh, if we go to group by status, what that's going to do is um, essentially create toggles for each status option. So in this case, um, routine tasks that are not related to projects, I'm going to hide that. And we're going to also hide archive. So uh, we've got this task database set up. We're good to go. Um, now we're getting into the meat of the video, which is creating a button and including all of the tasks related to an email newsletter so that when we apply this template, we can click that button and then automatically populate in the not started status, all of those tasks that we created. Okay, so to get started with the button, what we're gonna do is create a call out uh, and this will just kind of give some extra context. If we're on a team and we've got team members that are new to Notion or new to buttons, this could be helpful just to add some context as to what the button is and how it works. Uh, so we're going to give this a name and just a little space in here and then click forward slash button. And here we'll see the options of what we can start to automate within this button as we're setting it up. So the very first thing, if we're kind of zoom out a little bit, the goal here is to um, add a set of tasks to this parent project. Um, and also adjust any properties that make sense, whether it's uh, who those tasks are assigned to, an estimate of time to complete the task, or any links to other Notion resources related to that task. So we're going to select our task database. In this case, it's called Actions. And from here, we need to give it a name, but we want to add a few additional properties to customize these tasks. So the next thing we want to do is edit another property. And what I want to do is select the project that it's related to, um, and we're going to select this page, which means that uh, these tasks will automatically be connected to this particular newsletter as we create and use this template. So from here, I want to add a few additional properties just to um, see how that works. So if we've got um, a team who the task is assigned to, we can set that up in advance. Um, if we want to set a time estimate, if we're tracking that, and if we want to set a date, uh, right now it's a little bit limited. We could either pick a specific date or choose today or now. The main difference there is now also includes the time, whereas today is just the date. So uh, we could add those and um, we've got these properties that we could set up in advance. So from here, what I want to do is identify what are the things that I want to be consistent across all of these tasks, add them into this particular task before I duplicate it. So here I'm going to assign all of these to me and uh, we'll say all of the dates are today by default, which means that when this template is used, it'll automatically apply that specific date. 
Next, we want to um, click in the menu and click duplicate. So we're gonna do just a handful uh, to get a sense of uh, you know getting going with populating this with tasks. I'm not gonna put every single task for creating a newsletter. That would probably take a little too long. So first, uh, we're gonna say review newsletter notebook for this week theme. And we'll say this is 15 minutes assigned to me. Um, we've got one. The next one, we'll say um, write a motion creator spotlight blurb. Next draft. So let's say 25. And uh, next, we'll say generate. The journey. Ten minutes. Um, cool. And then we kind of go through, duplicate these, add any tasks that are related. One more thing I want to look at is adding links to other Notion materials or resources. Right now, we can't uh, use that mention page uh, like we do in the Notion workspace in general. That's a little bit limited, but we can still add a link in a text property. So. If we've got, let's say, the Substack email template uh, resource, I'm gonna copy a link to this. And if we go to properties and go to overview, which is just a text property, I'm going to um, Substack template and then highlight it and then press Control or Command V to link to that specific page. Last step we wanna take is adding a confirmation to this button. So this will just double check that we do want to add these tasks to the database. Um, this is could be useful for teams that have team members that are new to Notion or new to buttons in general. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to add another step and we're going to select show confirmation. And this, we can also adjust the text that comes with this. Um, the uh, button options, continue versus cancel, we can leave those as is. And then I'm going to drag these this button up to the very top. Um, so that, let's try that again. So that this is the first step in the automation that's happening with the button. So when I click done, that button is ready to go. So now what I want to do is uh, go back to the project database, use this email newsletter template, and then apply the button just to see how that works. So if we go back to projects and we go to this drop down, let's look for our new uh, project template. Let's click in there and we'll call this April 2023 newsletter. And you'll notice if we go to the filter, this uh, project filter is automatically updated to this project. So um, don't have to do any additional modifications there. Any tasks that are added in this view will automatically be assigned to the project. So uh, very last step, if we click on this button, let's see how that works. We're gonna press continue to confirm. And now we've got our tasks here populated in this project along with the due date, which we had set to today, um, who it's assigned to, and an estimate of time. Uh, these are all things that we adjusted in the button itself. So that's just a quick overview and one example. If you're thinking about using Notion buttons in other scenarios or other contexts, definitely let me know in the comments because I'll likely be doing a series of walkthrough videos on specific use cases. Uh, definitely want to do one on a button for a workout routine, um, which I'm very excited about. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think about Notion's new buttons and if you've got any use cases that you want, uh, you want us to explore on the channel. But anyway, hope that was helpful and see you in the next video.